If you have something burning in your heart, if you have so much in your heart that you want to pour before the Father, you will take advantage of time of prayer. When your heart is full, there is something you want to pour before the Father. You want to engage him in a discussion. You want to experience how you feel about the situation of life confronting you. Are you listening to me? You will learn to take advantage of time of prayer. Every time you have opportunity to pray, just like Paul, David wrote here, it is an opportunity for you to pour your heart before God the Father. Let's look at this particular verse again in Passion Translation, Psalm 62, verse 8. He said, join me, everyone. Trust only in God every moment. Tell him all your troubles and pour out what? Your heart longings to him. Let me stop there. Pour out your heart longings to him. This is one reason, among others, we set apart time to pray. When God called for prayer session like this, God wants us to pour out our hearts. As I was looking at this scripture, I remember the case of Jehoshaphat. When the level of army that came against him and the entire Judah, the Bible says he set apart time for, people, for the entire people to fast with their children and they gather before the Lord to pray, to pour their heart before the Lord concerning the situation they find themselves. And God in his faithfulness attended to their requests and gave them direction and gave them victory over the adversaries. One of the reasons we have to pray is that we have the opportunity to pour our heart, our heart longings to God. And it is, it is this kind of prayer of pouring your heart before the Lord. The way you feel. The kind of burden as it were. The kind of concern you have. When you pour it out before the Lord, it is such prayer that gains God's attention. I found myself in that situation before. Victories upon victories. Because God will never turn his back to his own children. Are you following what you are sharing? The time of prayer is the time whereby you are given the opportunity to develop that confidence in talking to your father, expressing yourself freely. Him listening to you and responding to you is the time whereby we pour our hearts before the father and God in his love respond, giving us answer, hallelujah, by talking to us. And when he gives us his word, we see the manifestation of what he talks about in the physical, in that area of concern that we talk to him about. Let's look at an example. First Samuel chapter 1, talking about the woman Hannah. We have read that story before, but I want us to look at this story of this great woman in First Samuel chapter 1 from verse 9 to 15. The Good News Bible is what I want us to go to look into. The Bible says one time after they had finished their meal in the house of the Lord at Shiloh, Anna got up. She was deeply distressed and she cried bitterly as she did what? As she prayed to the Lord. Meanwhile, Eli the priest was sitting in his place by the door. Once after a sacrificial meal at Shiloh, Anna got up and went to pray. Eli the priest was sitting at his customary place beside the entrance of the tabernacle. Anna was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. Hold on that verse, please. Many times there are things bordering at our hearts that we want to pour out before the Lord. I want you to understand how God responds. Is somebody listening to me? The Bible tells us Hannah was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. Some of us make that mistake when we have a burden in our hearts. We want to pour before the Lord. Instead of us to communicate directly and pour out all that is in our heart before the Lord, some Christians approach the Lord in prayer complaining 
about the situation of their lives. There is a difference between communicating, talking to the Lord and complaining before the Lord. The Bible did not tell us here now that Anna was in so much deep anguish, crying bitterly and complaining in prayer. Praise the Lord. Anna was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. Verse 11, please. And she made this vow. Did you see? She made this vow. O Lord heavens of heaven's army. If you look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son. She was specific. She knew what she wanted. And give me a son. Then I will give him back to you. It will be yours for his entire lifetime. And as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord. His ears will never be caught. Go ahead, please. The next verse, please. And as he was praying to the Lord, Eli watched her. Seeing her lips moving, but hearing no sound. He thought she, was, she had been drinking. Must you come here drunk? He demanded. Throw away your wine. Then she responded, oh no, sir. She replied, I have not been drinking wine or anything strong, but what? I am very discouraged and I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. In a state of discouragement, people of God, train yourself never to complain, but learn to pour your heart before the Lord the way the state of your heart is. Praise the living Jesus. Is somebody follow what you are sharing now? My emphasis in this verse of scripture is pouring our hearts unto the Lord. And I want you to take note of this. In pouring our heart unto God in prayer, we are able to remain focused without any distraction. When you find a Christian that is so distracted while praying, he's not pouring his, his or her heart unto God. When your heart is involved, if there is a burden in your heart, if there is a concern or a kind of discouragement in your heart that you are discussing with the Lord in prayer, nothing will distract you. You will be so focused until you receive that attention. For her to get to the point of making a vow before the Lord, are you listening to me? She was so intense and intentional in, its way, in her way and manner of communication with the Father that he had to enter into an agreement with God on the basis of his choice and desire. Are you listening to me? For, him to be able, for her to be able to receive that which he wanted from the Lord. So in pouring our hearts as sons and daughters of God before the Lord, we are focused, we become focused. Our attention will be to receive from the Father. And I tell you the truth, you will never be disappointed. Amen. Can I hear you? Amen. I say you will never be disappointed. Amen. So Christians who are distracted in prayer as castly, as castly have something burning in their hearts. And I want you to train yourself to approach God th this way. Don't just pray. Approach the Lord in prayer with a particular concern or a burden or a desire in your heart whereby you are able to pour your heart sincerely before the Lord. In prayer, when you approach God that way, you are so desperate to receive answer. God himself will give you attention and deliver to you the desires of your heart. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Another question is, why do we pray? Number two, we pray to have our inner man strengthened by the Holy Spirit. We pray to have our inner man strengthened by the Holy Spirit to stand strong against the adversity or against the adversary. We pray to have our inner man strengthened by the Holy Spirit to stand strong against the adversary in the midst of the difficult situation of life. Have you ever found yourself in a position whereby you are almost giving up? You look to the left, you look to the right, it's like nothing is working. You look to the left and to the right, your expectation is like it's being cut off. Discouragement wants to set, settle in your heart. To throw in the towel, 
that is the time God expects you to turn to him and receive strength. Our time of prayer is the time whereby we receive strength in the inner man to stand strong against the adversary in the midst of difficult situation of life. Are you listening to me, God's people? Talking about Jesus. About the hour Jesus was to go to the cross, there was a struggle between his spirit man desiring to fulfill the counsel and the purpose of the Father for his life and his flesh not wanting him to go to the cross. What did he do? There was a conflict because his spirit was ready to go to the cross but the flesh was crying. The Bible tells us what he did. Luke chapter 22, I want us to look at it again. New King James Version from verse 39. Talking about Jesus, the Bible says, coming out. He went to Mount of Olives. And as he was, and as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about the stone throw. And he knelt down and prayed. Saying, Father, look at it. Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. This verse 32 tells you where the conflict was. His spirit was willing to follow the plan and purpose of the Father for him being crucified for you and I. But the flesh was crying. Have we ever found yourself in that situation of wanting to do what the Spirit of God instructs you to do and your flesh is saying, don't do that. Praise the Lord. That was the state he found himself here. He said, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Verse 43. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven to do what? Strengthen him. The angel appeared. That's the Holy Ghost. He manifested himself. Then strengthened him Give him strength in the inner man. At that particular point, he received the strength to stand up. And at this particular point, the flesh was subdued. And he was ready to go to the cross. The next verse, the Bible tells us, And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Did you see that? He prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. When he rose up from prayer and he had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, why do you sleep? Rise and pray. Let's what? You enter into temptation. He stood up from prayer. He had received strength in the inner man. He was ready to face the consequence. He was ready to face the situation. He was ready to fulfill the plan and purpose of God, the Father, for him. Because as at that point, the flesh has been subdued. Inner man arose and was ready to go to the cross. I pray for you, you will not miss your place in destiny. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever we take time to pray earnestly, Whenever we take time to pray honestly, our desire for things of the flesh will be subdued by the power of the Holy Spirit to do the things that are pleasing to God. This is why we pray. 